Hi, everyone. Welcome to Source Snack Break. Today is Tuesday, May 26th, and we have a, we're keeping a little loose today. Our presenter, Jonathan, cannot get his camera to turn on, so it's just going to be my face, and we're going to, it'll be like a little video podcast is what we'll call it. How about that? Um, so as we get started, I'll explain a couple things about the webinar tool. So you're all muted automatically, but you have access to the live chat there on the right. So you can pop in your favorite emoji to try it out. You can use the live chat to ask questions or comment. We'll make sure we answer all the questions you have. So definitely bring it on. Uh, we love getting questions. Um, it, it makes for a, a fun, entertaining time. So today's guest is Jonathan with New Energy Works Timber Framers. And Jonathan, I am so excited to have you, even though we can't, oh my gosh, there he is. Look. There I am. Magic, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about the company? Sure, so we started 30 years ago as, a, as a, um, an energy efficiency company. That was my thing uh, at the time. I was all about, um, I mean, to be really sort of oversimplified, I was too young to fight in Vietnam or against Vietnam, and I was looking for a cause. And so energy efficiency was the cause at the time. You know, I love that. That was the cause. And since I'm a one cause kind of guy, it's been that way ever since. So what we found is that with energy efficiency, we found a cool way to insulate. As we found a cool way to insulate homes, we also saw that by bringing the structure inside the envelope, we were able to do a couple of cool things, make a better envelope and, you know, express timber, frankly. I mean, it just became this visual thing and, and a thing of craft, you know? So I've often said, you know, if you're gonna spend like 10 hours a day with these people that you work with, you may as well have the best people you can around you. And so highly crafted people, people are really focused on, you know, superior structure and visuals is just, it's cool people to hang out with. So I've been doing awesome. that for 30 years, hanging out with cool people. <laughs> that's what, that's living the dream. Living the dream, that's pretty yeah. much, to be honest so, with you. Yeah, so can you tell us a little bit about what your company does? Yeah, so New Energy Works is functionally a timber framing company. That means we're heavy timber rights. Uh, we call ourselves timber rights. We call ourselves heavy timber uh, carpenters. Um, and so we work with anything big, uh, these days, some of the, the phrasing is mass timber, although mm -hmm. mass timber sort of implies more CLTs and large commercial glue land project, CLT being uh, cross laminated timbers, which is a European technology, blah, blah, blah. But mostly what we're known for and what we do the most of is individual solid timbers joined in a combination of traditional joinery and um, metal, whether expressed metal or hidden metal. So most of okay. it's structural, although we do, probably 15% of our work is visual only. Uh, so I like to call it trimber as opposed to timber. <laughs> you know, That's you a good one. Keep, you gotta keep a- You really do. Yeah, you gotta keep the humor um, up. Yeah, so when does it become like big timber, like how big are we talking? Yeah, so the the actual definition of timber is four inch in diameter or more. Okay. Less than that in the US, they're really basically called dimensional or studs or something like that. So okay. anything four inch or more, I mean, behind me, you can see my own house, those are uh, six by eights or uh, that curve started out to be an eight by 14 that we turned into a bit of a curved timber with some bandsaw work. Uh, so, you know, it's big stuff. I mean, I have, I have timbers that we've recycled, uh, reclaimed in our yard that are 16 inches wide by 36 inches deep by 50 feet long. That's, wow. you know, getting more serious. But yeah. a lot of our work is done in a, six, a four inch, six inch, eight inch, uh, dimension. Okay. And again, it's really all design driven, basically, you know, yes, we have, if it is a structural uh, project, we do have certain uh, guidelines and engineering that we follow pretty closely. But, you know, after that, it's a visual thing, just like you can see on your screen here, you know, there's a variety of ways to skin a timber cat, so to speak. And, uh, and so here we used double rafters sitting on a canted plate with 
canted posts and long curve, you know, pretty stylized look in this mm -hmm. particular picture that you happen to have up. Awesome. Okay, so this is one of my favorite photos. Um, this is the Muji store here in Portland. So can you talk a little bit about how you work with designers and how designers can work with you guys to create like um, just the different possibilities if they want something decorative like this Muji store, if they want something structural like what your house is doing, um, when it becomes the, the timber versus trimber, as you say, like how, how does that work as a designer? How can they use you? Yeah, so in this case, um, Muji is a, you know, if you've not been there, you should, because they've got a lot of really cool things you didn't know you really should go buy. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You didn't even know you needed some of these things. And <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty quirky Japanese uh, retail outfit um, that has really started to make a big splash in the U.S. We've now done their, uh, this is their U.S. flagship store, their first uh, brick and mortar store. Now they've, we've done one with them in um Manhattan as well uh, mm -hmm. and um, they basically came over here and spent significant amount of time in our yard with our crafts people we've we've uh, wire brushed timbers we've resawn timbers trying to get them a look that they wanted and then uh, when we did that they when they hit upon a look we created a series of of um, sample uh, so that we knew about what the range is because wood and particularly recycled wood we don't only work with recycled wood but this is recycled wood um has a range to it and then we worked with a local millwork company a well-known one you guys know it as axiom you know and the two of the uh, our crew and their project manager got together picked timbers uh wire brushed a finish on them and uh, then did the joinery as you see i mean if you go in there there's all sorts of timber and recycled wood in there and kind of fits a palette. Um, yeah. In other words, a three, uh, you know, you guys all work with storyboards. Well, this you could say is a, a story truck. You know, there's <laughs> a lot more to it than that. But And sometimes it's just a picture or all sorts of different uh, methods of communication. Okay. And Our so shop you... is in McMinnville. So for Portlanders, it's kind of easy to get to and take a look at. The folks from Japan yeah. had a little bit more of a commute. Yes. And so did you guys do all of this milling and it was shipped to the project site or was this done at the project site? So in this case, this is done in conjunction with Axion, who did a lot of the milling themselves. We did all the prep. And there isn't okay. a lot of real joinery to this one. There isn't a lot of very difficult stuff. It's really, this one was pretty simple. And uh, um, and we did it. Uh, I think Axion did a lot of the actual cutting themselves. Okay. And what kind of wood do you guys work with mostly? So a variety. If it's reclaimed wood from the West Coast, it's almost always going to be uh, it's almost always going to be uh, fir because that was the structural wood that we reclaim. Although we've gotten quite a bit of um, redwood and other West Coast softwoods. If it's from the East Coast, we've got a shop in New York and one here. Uh, we do uh, we reclaim all sorts of hardwoods from old farmhouses and barns you know we like to say the, the those farmers when they were building those barns were practical people it was whatever tree was nearby and yep. um, and so we get all sorts of woods from the mixed deciduous forests of, of uh, the east coast so awesome. we've gotten all sorts of different wood Cool. So I love this photo here of your crew and the sort of possibility. I mean, to me, when I see ma think mass timber, big timber, I definitely think of stuff like this. Can you talk about um, like how you like what is this type of structure? Like I did not do well in structures class. Like, please help Ren um, <laughs> understand what all this means. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this one I, was for a uh, Vietnamese uh, Zen uh, monastery down in California. There were about 14 of these. 65 foot long trusses along with some um, structural fascia on the outside that were curving in about every direction oh yeah there's there's it is up there and uh so that's a glue lamb those are mostly glue laminated timbers um very structured and uh, you know we worked with an engineer and architecture firm as well as these particular monks uh to try to get them what they wanted 
Okay. And so when it comes to those connector plates, all of that hardware, is that something you guys create for every project or is that something that you work with the designer on? So if it's a structural project here on the West Coast, we're in seismic zone D and, and even E in a few little locations. So those are really high seismic locations, in which case we do rely on metal, though most of the time our metal is um, knife plates and other European style timber locks that are inside and not on the exposed. Mm -hmm. So if you want an exposed, we do it exposed. If you want it, to, if you don't want that, then we don't. But most of the time, there is some metal helping us. In fact, okay. zone A and East Coast and other areas where, uh, you know, uh, earthquakes or wind loading isn't much of an issue, we're still using quite a bit of wood to wood traditional joinery. But out here, we use oh. a combination of traditional joinery and hidden or expressed steel. Okay, so it really is up to the designer to if they wanted it it's a combination of designer and engineering okay yeah oh it's up to the designer if they want it exposed or not yeah got it okay so i'm gonna go back um so can you talk a little bit about using timber framing as structural components can you talk a little bit about how designers can work with you um to create some timber structure i'm assuming that it's possible yeah i hope so we're <laughs> We're still standing. <laughs> we're still standing 30 years later, you know. We've got a we've got probably 1200 timber structures under our belt. We're very active, you know. We've mm -hmm. got a big shop in McMinnville and a bigger bigger shop in the Finger Lakes region of New York, and we're booked for most of the year even though there's in the new energy works business there's about 60 people. Oh wow, okay. So, uh, so basically we work with designers all over the country. I think we're at 42 states and four countries. Uh, and oh, wow. so how to work with a designer? I, I'm not sure I really know how to answer that without knowing the designer. You know, sometimes okay. there's people who come to us really knowledgeable and really have a lot of experience in heavy timber, expressed timber. And there are others who just have a sense of it. Maybe there's visual uh, pictures that they can share, but you know, we do full 3D modeling ahead of time uh, mm -hmm. for for and with you uh, mm -hmm. so that, that you have a real sense, a walkthrough sense of what it means. I mean, I think most of the people who would be in your uh, podcasts, you you know, they understand Revit and Enscape and SketchUp. We work in all of that vernacular to help share, to make sure you get a sense of what it is you're looking for. All of these were designed with independent architects in different parts of the country, uh, mm -hmm. Midwest, West, and New York, I can see here uh, <laughs> in the boat. And, yeah. and you can see they're very different. Each of these looks is kind of quite different than the next one, so. Yeah. What are some things designers should keep in mind if they're thinking about using timber as a structural element in their projects? Are there some like just, tips and tricks you've got from like the like things they th should think about from the very beginning that become problems later on if they don't consider like as we consider using timber a lot more frequently now um what what sort of wisdom can you pass on to those of us who are very new to this bring somebody on who uh who, who, who knows what they're who doing does it every day um yeah. uh, but seriously there's certain times when for instance people are hiding timbers in exterior uh uh, in the exterior element, uh, the exterior envelope. And, you know, we find that that can be an issue with um, thermal bridging, for instance. I mean, that might be something to think about. Um, cost is always a consideration. You know, it is a little bit more expensive expensive to express craft as structure like we do. Mm -hmm. um, the flip side of that is from a, you know, from a carbon footprint at the build stage. Uh, it's, uh, you know, wood is good. We're just amazingly uh, impressed with you know, the ability to embody the carbon in the wood forever, you know, in settings like this. And mm -hmm. so, you know, again, it kind of fits back to my original roots as being an environmentalist. 30 years later, it seems like it's even more critical and more logical. Because at the time, I was yeah. mostly thinking about operational carbon footprint and how that, you know, by doing it this way, we can save so much. Well, now the build carbon footprint, which is so important in this uh, carbon economy, you know, is is now a, a wow, wood is good, like I said. 
So oh my gosh, we have a question I'm from the audience. Here. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I would say get somebody involved as early as you can, but in the meantime, gather the images that you're trying to achieve. Okay. Inspiration images for sure. And Love you know, that. My, my experience has been that most of the uh, uh, architects and designers we work with are pretty smart folk. And, you know, some of the details, the engineering details, well, that's not expected for, you know, the design professional to know all those, but yeah, that's what we do. Sweet. Okay. So Allison's got a question is, um, as mass timber is getting more popular, are you seeing projects come across procurement issues? Projects come across procurement issues. I'm not sure I understand the phrasing. Like, are you having a hard time getting enough material? I guess. No. Like, okay. <laughs> Hooray, <laughs> Allison. No. You got it. It's not an issue. <laughs> like, we're now it's doing not. CLT projects as well, cross laminated mm -hmm. timber projects. And mm -hmm. um, more and more, um, both domestic but international availability. We tend to bring our CLTs in from Austria because. They've been doing it for 40 years, do it really well, aggressively priced. And the carbon mm -hmm. footprint of a FSC spruce timber from uh, Europe, which is going to get here on the water, is actually mm -hmm. pretty small uh, relative to, you know, other methodologies. But, um, you know, there's plenty of options right now for both cross laminated timbers, glue lambs and solid timbers. Wow. Awesome. So if I was a designer and I was trying to sort of tell a client about the benefits of building something like this, of using timber, of using big timber, um, what are some talking points you can use as a designer to sort of nudge your client in this direction if they aren't there already? Your life will be happier. Um, your love life is spectacular. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> and the neighbors will all be envious. How's, how's that for a start? That's a good one. Yeah. Do you have any stats about like, um, I know you're really into energy efficiency. Is there anything in there like it'll save you a certain amount of money? Is there anything like that? Yeah. So the timber framing itself is inside the envelope that we do. Mm -hmm. most. And that and as it's inside the envelope, your thermal bridge is lessened or eliminated. The issue then is what is the envelope? So in the timber yeah. framing itself doesn't, you know, doesn't address that. We also mm -hmm. do quite a bit of envelope work and our envelopes are high performance, passive solar, uh, sorry, passive house uh, standards if desired. But mm -hmm. um, even if they're not, you know, we're in climate zone four here, somewhat of a moderate climate. Uh, and so we're, you know, we believe in airtight homes, airtight mm -hmm. projects, but also ones that have the proper amount and not over uh, the, uh, the, you know, the logical amount of uh, insulation. The main thing is breaking the thermal bridge, which is critical, and keeping the airtight envelope. Those are the two biggest things. More than okay. R value, even, although, okay. you know, R value is a value too. Yeah. I can keep Great. that, you know, this isn't about energy efficiency, this one. It's about wood timbers, but mm -hmm. some other time, if anybody wants to buy me a beer, geeking out on energy, you know, the envelope methodologies is a lot of fun in the right yeah. context. No, I love it. Um, that makes total sense. Um, is there anything else that designers should keep in mind? Like, we're almost out of time here. So designers, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in really quick. But Jonathan, is there anything um, else you can think that like, is there a difference in choosing species? Does that have any difference? Or is it more than just aesthetics? Like how can how can designers sort of think about which species to use? Yeah, so I mean, from a, you know, from availability and uh, you just can't beat Douglas fir and we can put all sorts of finishes on it. We've done mm -hmm. everything from Sosugiban uh, uh, and then wire brushed to hewn to of course planes to even painted. So mm -hmm. there's very little that we, you can't do with a timber, you know, that your imagination can't pull together. Um, awesome. I just really need to emphasize it. You know, okay. That lower right picture, for instance, is old industrial timbers that we use. The one above is glue lambs. The one lower left is is um, resawn. And I think those they were either resawn or fresh sun for stewardship certified timbers. So if you believe in that that whole FSC certification, you know, we do have FSC certification. So I think those are oh, the important wow. things. But the visuals are. Um, Is where it's at. Wow. You know, I'm yeah. always schooled by the designers I work with. Every time I think I've seen it all, you know, somebody comes up with something gorgeous <laughs> or fascinating or quirky, um, but yeah. never impossible. 
Yeah. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so designers, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you liked the snack break, you can register for another one. So hit, hit that register now button. But if you have any other questions, feel free to add them here. Um, and Jonathan, I know you'll be back to talk in a couple weeks about your sister company, Pioneer Millworks and Exterior Cladding. So maybe we will get to have that discussion about thermal bridging a little bit more in depth. So I'm excited about that. So everybody stay tuned. Um, in the meantime, Jonathan, it was really great to see you. I'm glad we got your your camera working because your own home is like the perfect visual background I'm, for what we're talking about yeah, today. Yeah, I'm stuck at home in this uh, coronavirus, but I'm blessed with having a nice one, so. That is true. We are the lucky uh, ones. We, yeah, amen to that. Um, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you again in a couple of weeks. How about that? Okay, look forward to it. See you, Ryan. Right. We'll see yeah, you. Everyone. Bye. Thank you.